What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. They beat the Kings 5 0 somehow. That was insane. Uh, imagine if the Sharks played like this, I don't know, for the previous 30 games instead of just right now. That's ah, just a thought. Maybe that's something they should do. Lots of different things happened. Gregor got scratched. Reedy's a thing. Dolan's back. Timo's back. Hurdle's back back and then possibly leaving lots to talk about we'll break down king's sharks after music you're locked on sharks your daily podcast on the san jose sharks part of the locked on podcast network your team every day I'm your host, Scott Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is co-host JD, the Aunt Baru to my Shmi. <laughs> Just gonna keep doing, running the Star Wars ones back. Yeah, why not? I was excited. I watched. I started. Um, I started watching them all again nice. uh, after the Obi Wan trailer came out. I got really excited and wanted to go back and watch them. So, uh, we just watched the Phantom Menace. There's parts of okay. So I have a thing. There's parts of it that are good. Yes. Like, take out the Gungan, like, if they would have made the Gungans better, that was fine. It's just like yes. the Jar Jar and Boss Nass, like, overt racism is really bad, and Jar Jar sucks. But bringing the two cultures together and having them battle, great. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I don't think people talk enough about, or maybe I just haven't seen it that I don't like, is that Anakin flies the Naboo Starfighter up and destroys the entire army by accident. Yeah. I, they could have changed that up a little bit. I don't know. But there's like lots of good parts. And then I got to listen to Duel of the Fates uh which is always again. a good time <laughs> it's actually pretty cool i forgot oh yeah amazing time uh william Eklund just showed up on screen yes. <laughs> a minute, a minute in. sorry honey <laughs> duel of the fates stays on during sex <laughs> <laughs> oh imagine having sex the duel of the fates oh that'd be sick uh one thing though that's cool is that they when they killed um qui-gon spoilers uh, <laughs> the 20 year old movie <laughs> spoilers. Uh, when they killed Qui-Gon it was cool because Darth Maul like punched him in the face and like knocked him off balance and then stabbed him he didn't like swipe or anything I just thought you don't see too many stab kills in Star Wars I don't think right uh, the Clone Wars you do but, okay yeah. live action <laughs> no not live action so yeah stab kills are cool but it like really gave the finality of like death yeah. which, which is pretty sweet um, even though Qui-Gon is a force ghost guy yep which is cool so, do you think he's going to be in the new one? Uh, oh, in the, the Obi -Wan? one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if it's the timeline, he's he's made connections with uh, with Obi Wan before. Yeah, I would. Ex yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd be down for it. Anyway, the Sharks beat the Kings five nothing, and it's not even like we can sit here and say, "Hey, the Sharks won," but because of this, and they got outplayed here, here, and here. Uh, they just straight up outplayed the Kings, which is fun. Yeah, something we have Kings not are... seen in the long yeah. time. Yeah, I, I don't know. What to, I don't know what to say after that. What do I do like, with my hands? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. They. Uh, if you look, the third period was obviously a lot more Kings, but that's uh, something you typically see across the NHL, where when a team has four goal lead heading into the third period, um, they typically don't do anything. Uh, unless it's just an out of control game, but <laughs> or it, Timo Meyer. My favorite part of the like the third period was like line one. Okay, we're just gonna dump it in. What get off of the change? Line three, we're gonna dump it in. Get off of the change. Line four, we're gonna dump it in. Get off of the change. Timo Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> he had a three point night, so hey, we worked out for him. Yeah. Uh, are, are you calling Timo line two? Well, I mean, the hurdle. I think hurdle lines line one. So. Oh, did he get moved off the hurdle line? Yeah. It, so, hurdle, it was the Timo um, Couture Dalen line. That's line two. I would, I oh, yeah. And then hurdle was running with Rudy and. Yeah. Rudy, Rudy and Balsers. And Barabanov. So. Yeah. No, Rudy is Balsers. Rudy is Balsers. Yeah. Rudy Barabanov, et cetera, et cetera. That's kind of yeah. weird. That that line shouldn't work all that well, but it does. Hurdle's a it bad does. man. Yes. <laughs> uh, quickly on the hurdle note, uh, Elliot Friedman. Pierre Lebrun has been silent. Uh, I don't know where he is. We've got to throw up the Pierre Lebrun signal again. Give us some hurdle news. Mm -hmm. uh, Friedman said that hurdle is not available at this time. That probably just means the Sharks, they'll get a call uh, like from Boston and be like, hey, 
hurdle and they'll be like, well, he's not available. We're still working on a contract. We'll chit chat, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So we have. Do you think seen... they butt slam? They, they, the rudest of slams is the butt slam. Is that how Doug Wilson and Joe will? Is that how they answer the phone when someone wants hurdle? What's a butt slam? It's a Futurama joke. Anyway, oh. <laughs> the rudest of joke, the rudest way to slam to. Yeah. Uh, you hang up the phone. Yeah, with your I, butt. I, that, that seems like a deep cut. <laughs> it's a deep cut. Anyway. Okay. What episode is it from? I don't remember off the top of my head. But... Okay. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, I guess. I don't think so. No, no, no. I think they've got to They've got to keep the, the phones warm uh, so that if hurdle doesn't want to show up. So most likely they're going to need a chunk of days to work out a hurdle deal and like really figure it all out. So it's not like they'll take this down to the 11th hour uh, on next Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, the deadline will know if we don't know by tonight, I would say by Wednesday, we've got to know if it's a yes or a no, because he, uh, they, they need time for a, a person that's going to command lots of stuff back uh, yep. and fitting his cap into people's, um uh, cap situations it's going to be tricky so there's just they're going to need more time and i think we'll we'll know a conclusion soon uh coming up here what do you think right now as a, so we're recording this mm -hmm. sunday afternoon for by the time you hear this we're a week away what do you the odds hurdle is still a, a shark on tuesday the 22nd i don't know because i don't think hurdles short-sighted insofar as he sees the last two games is like wow we're amazing <laughs> yeah there's so many more games as soon as soon as one little piece like as soon as carlson went out they took a huge downturn. Like, if that happens again, then they're just in the same spot. You know what I mean? What if Couture yeah. gets hurt? What if Hurdle himself get like? It's not like, like Colorado just got lost. Gabriel Landis Cog, uh, hoping to get him back for the playoffs, but they still have Rantanen and McKinnon and Taze and Makar and Gerard and Kadri. Um, they still have all of these guys. A lot of other dudes, yeah. A lot yeah. of other dudes, whereas San Jose doesn't have a lot of other dudes. They do still have dudes that mm -hmm. put on skates. So I think 60% he stays, 40% he goes right now. Yeah, I'm kind of, that's right where I'm at too. So I think just because it's taken so long and there's contract, like I think they're really waiting this one out to the end. And we yeah. know that. The Sharks are trying to sign him, and it's Hurdle that's like, well, I don't know. So, yeah, which well, is I mean, fair. that's his prerogative. To yeah, do yeah. oh, yeah, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not making fun of Hurdle. I would say if if we don't have a contract kind of, you know, we're not getting the Pierre tweet out that's like, oh, it looks like Hurdle's, you know, the contract's on the way or something like that by Wednesday, then I think that shifts drastically to the, um, he's getting traded. But yeah, I think when I think Wednesday's a big day for the, the Sharks when it comes to this. So, yep. You know, else is big, Kyle. Built bars? Nope, not built bars. Not yet. Taking care of your stomach. That's where Athletic Greens comes in. So they are next product that I've started using every day because, like, you know, I'm older now, getting a little older. Brett Burns just had his birthday, which means mine's right around the corner. So I got to start taking care of myself a little bit better. That's where I have, before I even have my morning coffee, I have an Athletic Greens. So the Athletic Greens, one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, is absorbing 75 high quality mineral, uh, vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and oxygen to start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. I need that, that last one there. All these things. So... You know, it's, I know a lot of people, they're worried about the price with this. It costs us some $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper also than getting all the different supplements yourself. And you're investing in all the one nutritional insurance. Great thing. You order it, comes with a nice little jar, comes with your, your, you know, your scoop and everything. You put in eight ounces of water, scoop, shake it up. You're good to go. Have it right before I have my coffee. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient Daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season, is just one scoop and a cold uh, water every day. That's it. No need for a million different uh, pills and supplements to look out for your health. So make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily insurance 
uh, nutritional insurance. Do you, uh, is there any teams before we move on that you don't want Hurdle to go to? Uh, Vegas, number one, but <laughs> they're not going to trade for him. Yeah, they, they don't, don't have, have... It's literally impossible. And they might not even make the playoffs, yeah, but uh, I think seeing him in like a Kings or Ducks jersey. No, no, be... okay. Teams that actually will be trading for him. Well, I mean, there's the, the Kings and Ducks, if they really wanted to get into it, they have. Yeah, but there's no no shot Tomas Hurdle gets traded to the Kings, Ducks, or... Ducks. Yeah. yeah, they have the ammo. That's right. what I'm, I'm just saying they have the ammo. If the if they could make a Godfather offer where Doug Wilson has to really, really think about it. Um, not sure, and I can also I can also drive yeah. across the country in my car. I'm not going to do it. Um, the Bruins. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't want to see Boston at all. Taking out the, the fact that the they prospects won't... are crap. Yeah, I don't want to cheer for Boston, and I don't want to cheer for Toronto. It's same as when Thornton went to Toronto. I don't want that shit. Yeah, Colorado would be fine with Florida. Florida would be fun. I think Florida would be the most fun because then you have Thornton and Hurdle that you can cheer for. So yeah. Yeah, Florida, Colorado. I don't know who else would be a, a the wild. The Rangers, the Wild. Yeah, they're all they're all fine. Um, just not Boston, Pittsburgh, Toronto. Yeah, Pittsburgh would be gross. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I'm sure for them. Yeah. Yeah. Edmonton would be the most hilarious. <laughs> Him and Kane again. Just... Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. I was just thinking because they're inept. Uh, yeah. It'd be funny. I, I don't think he's, he's going. He's to definitely Edmonton. not going to Edmonton. No, no, no. no. Um, well, I mean, if Edmonton was on his three team trade list, eh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, anyway, Tom, you got nothing you could say here. Scott Reedy again, he's a thing. He's proves a thing. that he should be in the lineup. The dude draws penalties at an eighth grade level, it is incredible. It, and that's he does, he does more than just draw penalties, but um, yeah, he he's he's got some hands, you know, I think he's. I think he's got something we talked about it last time where there's just something there, you know, and once he starts, I think if he gets a chance to play up a little bit more with like some more talent around him, uh, I mean, I don't know, I guess you could pull out Rudy, but like, I wouldn't mind seeing a bear band off hurdle Rudy line for a little bit. So, like, you know, well, I think, I think they should just start with playing him more. I think he played like 12 minutes last night. Yeah. Rudy played. Yeah, like 12 28. The only guys that played less than him were Gadjevich played 11. Mm-hmm. Uh, Veal Cogliano both played in the 11s. Uh, say Cogliano for the trade deadline. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. So, like, yeah. basically, your fourth line was Veal, Gadjevich, Reedy, mm-hmm. and they didn't play very much. And then Cogliano uh, didn't play a ton either. Um, then again, Benino only played 14 minutes. Um, Dalian only played 14 minutes. What a weird minutes distribution going on here <laughs> what the hell is happening yeah well, i mean they were winning most of the game so they could yeah that's why i mean like why didn't some of these guys play like why didn't the fourth line play more <laughs> yeah i mean everybody played at least 10 minutes it's not like i mean timo played 19 but you know um and then hurdle Yo, he was like the 18. only one doing anything in the third yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, i'll go get it i'll go get it yeah, but even like Burns well, I only guess only played seventeen. Yeah, they they kind of spread out the minutes a little bit more. So even Burns only played like played less than twenty four minutes, which is well, he played twenty three fifty five. But still, like we're usually in like the twenty eight minute range for Burns. So yeah, they were able to kind of you know take it easy on some of the guys there. So, um, but yeah, Scott Reedy looks like he. I think I think there's something there. So I would like to see him get more opportunities to continue to show off those sweet, sweet skills. That we and the power and the power play. It's been good. <laughs> well, I mean, I want him on the power play. He is on the power play. He's no, on PP2. I want more. On the, I want more. <laughs> more, more. I so. would, I would even, I would say you could even throw him on power play one and send down like a, a hurdle or a couture or something. I got to PP2 to spread it out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, be interesting to be interesting to see what he does because, Now's the time. Uh, I uh, but we'll Kyle, the end. two point four percent chance to make the playoffs right now. It went up. Right, well, let's <laughs> let's talk about the play. Let's talk about the power play first. Yes. We'll get to this insanity. You go. This is your thing. I thought you were gonna. You said no. let's talk about the power play. And then yeah. Gonna, I thought no, you were gonna make a point weird. about the power this, play. This, no, I'm not making any points. I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just guiding you. 
I mean, it's been a lot better recently, and it's kind of crazy when you have a eleven and a half million dollar defenseman come back. Um, the power play looks a lot better for some reason. So, but yeah, I mean, the special teams basically have been since the All Star break have been what's kept the team afloat. And I don't know if the five on five play it can be as consistent as it's been, you know, the past couple of games since Carlson's been back. But you know, at least it's taken a step in the right direction and. Um, and, you know, I don't expect the power play to continue at, you know, the 33% it's operating at right now or whatever in the past few games. But, you know, it's positive signs from from this unit. So and I know we, we you know, lambasted the Burns Carlson power play. We're never going to see it again. It's working right now. So let's yeah, just ride the, the hot hand. Just ride the hot hand. But it's not. We know that it won't. Like we've seen. Just because it works like one time doesn't mean that it's going to work. It's just, it's not. It, they need to do something else. They so went so they work. went two for three on the power play yesterday, and they went uh, two for six in on Thursday night. So I mean, I know the Kings special teams are poo poo platter, but like it's working right now. So just ride it till it stops working, and then do something else. So. But then we're going to have to go through the whole thing again where it's like, oh, like, what do we do? It, it's just dumb. Just don't do it. Like, I understand it's working now, but going yeah. up against the Kings and having the people back that you have, you can actually try and get two viable power play units that will go no. forward because this won't no, be no. two, <laughs> this, two <Crazy>. units, <laughs> two whole units. Uh, there's a Star Wars joke in there somewhere. Uh, That's illegal. <laughs> There's two of them. Shoot them. <laughs> There's your Star Wars joke. Great. Uh, I just we have we have dozens upon dozens of games of evidence that it does not work. We have a hundred power play shifts or whatever it is that it doesn't work. Just because it works every once in a while doesn't doesn't mean it's going to work. And the Kings, like you said, oh, I don't think it's, it's going to work long term. But I mean, it's working right now, so. But the whole power plays are working, so why not try mm -hmm. while everybody's in the good mojo to like maybe tweak it a little bit here and there, move Carlson yeah. off, move Reedy over. Like there you go, there's your switch right there. Yeah. Move Burns and Carlson onto the other one and move Reedy up to the top one. See what see what we got going. Because it's only gonna help a guys like Reedy or Dalad, um, Rudy, whatever, to play on the top power play unit and get more yep. exposure. Or some I don't know. Should we gamble? Let's gamble. Gambler baby. Mm -hmm. You know what? I like bet online. Because their ad reads are nice and concise and succinct and short. They have easily the best ones. Unlike some of you other people. But it is that time of year again. We are recording this on Selection Sunday. The conference tournament games are finishing up. And March Madness will be upon us this week. So from all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, except for this one, and news this season. It's not just March Madness, even though we'll all be betting heavily on March Madness. BetOnline continues to be your source for all your sporting and gambling information needs, including live betting. Live betting is always good. And your favorite Vegas casino games. And whatever else you want, go check it out. Maybe maybe you want to bet on Latvian hockey. Check it out. See if it's there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. And when you're done with betting, or you're sitting on the couch for four straight days watching March Madness, and you're eating, you're tired of eating chips or whatever, that's where sometimes you need to reach for a built bar. I know most people this have already given up on their New Year's resolutions, but not this year. If you're sticking to your resolutions and you want to eat right, that's where you can re reach for a built bar. And if you're just tired of like the built bars, maybe you haven't tried their puffs. That's where you're missing out if you haven't had one of those. The puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallow. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are fan favorites with incredible flavors like yummy, yummy cinnamon churro, chocolate marshmallow, banana cream pie. So good. These are going to be all be your new fla flavors, if you will. All Bill Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, the puffs included 100% real char chocolate. So with low calorie, high protein, replace your candy bars with these. They're even better. A typical candy bar can go anywhere from two to 300 calories. While Bill Bar, that's Bill Bars are 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So head over to Bill.com, use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Bill.com. 
Timo Meyer said that they feel that they can make the playoffs. Now, before everybody jumps on this, A, it's stupid, but B, you can't really expect a player not to say that. Uh, they're they not mathematically like they, they're going to say it. The thing that I think we take umbrage with is when media uh, and stuff like that is like, yeah, <laughs> woohoo, yeah, good. Look at Timo Meyer. It's like, no, you can just be like, it also comes from like the questioning too. Like, you don't have to ask them if they think they can make the playoffs. Like, you just don't have to do it. You don't have to talk about the playoffs. You can talk about anything else. Um, so when you lead them down that path and then they're like, oh, the Sharks believe, do they have. Curtis tweeted out, do they have a run in them? No, man, they have a 2.4% chance of making the playoffs. They're like it's nine up for points 1. back. 7. Yeah. Oh, sure, but they're like a million points back, and they have yeah. to hop over like five teams. Plus, they need all – they basically need to win 75% of their games going home, and they need like the Ducks and the Oilers and the Kings to lose and the Knights to lose most of their games. It's just – it's so hard at this point in the season with 25 games left or whatever it is to make that – Yep. to make to make up that ground so timo's not wrong couture is not wrong i wish they wouldn't say it and we believe we're going to the playoffs and more frame it more with like we know we have a chance and we're going to keep working hard and anything can happen sort of thing less yep. of like a yeah we're right in the thick of it and more of like a we're trying but again <laughs> it is dumb <laughs> i mean if carlson wasn't didn't get hurt those you know carlson was here those 15 games they're probably right in the thick of it, but I mean, that's the thing with Carlson is, you know, you, you, you hope if you get 60 games out of Carlson in a season, you kind of consider that a win. So, and that's just how it's going to be with Carlson going forward. So, and you know, yeah, like you were saying, it's, they're not going to just be like, guys, no, we're not making the playoffs. There's no way. Like, that's just not how they're wired, you know, and they're, they're going to believe that like 2% chance that they can make it, but whatever. So yeah, we're not expecting a playoff run. So. But I mean, oh, we, and we don't need to. We don't need to promote it either. Yeah, we don't need to be writing articles <laughs> talking about how they're gonna do it. Like it's, it's just silly. It's just silly, silly, silly. Um, but we've gone this long. We haven't even talked about Aiden Hill, who came back, looked good, had you know had some big saves. Can we maybe hopefully start to trust Aiden Hill just a smidge? Well, we're gonna be consistent on it. Got to see a couple games in a row. Yeah. Uh, remember at the beginning of the year when he shut at the Coyotes, like the second game of the season or whatever? Yeah. Or whatever it was. Uh, we were like, ooh, Aiden Hill. And then he shit his pants and he came back around, was it Christmas time that he had that like little stretch? Yeah, a good, had a good run in, after from, from Christmas to, to when he got hurt in January. So, so like th that was okay, but like we haven't seen it sustained yet. So obviously, this is his best performance in a long time, mm -hmm. uh, which is good, but. I need to see it against Florida. Like, even if they lose against Florida, but he's like playing well, that's that's one thing, um, which is what we expect. Yeah. So yes, uh, but like, and then then a game after that, and the game after that, then get Sachenko back in there, and then the game. Yeah. Like, we need to see the next like two weeks. So we might see Reimer's, yeah. Reimer's practicing. They're saying he might be back here in the next two weeks or so. So I guess he's not getting traded. <laughs> yes, he's not getting traded. He's, yes. Damn it. <laughs> He's too important, but you know, I mean, the Sharks are starting to get healthy right now. I mean, I don't, it's like we've said before, it's not enough for a run, but I mean, I think they could play spoiler to some teams down here at the end. Oh, of but the that's day. not, that's not good. That's not fun though, but well, it's not that it's not fun. It's that like when you're, we're clawing your way up to 17th is way less ideal than just finishing 27th or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. um, that's the thing here is that playing spoiler is one thing, but like, Ugh, I don't I don't know. Also, Ryan Merkley just never getting some run on this team. No, I mean they did say he might be available on Tuesday, but the yeah, way no the sharks shot. played the way the sharks played this weekend, I you know, the past couple of games, I don't foresee many changes. Um as, yeah, from from Bob with the way the, the team's playing right now. So yep. Ryan Merkley, R.I.P. We hardly knew ye. <laughs> so Somehow the Kings are still second in the division. The division is ass. Yeah, because Vegas is terrible Calgary, right now. So Calgary's got 79 points Yeah, they're uh, very in, good. in 58 games. Yes, they are the cream of the crop here. Mm -hmm. uh, then the Kings have 72 points in 60 games. Uh, the Oilers have 68 in 59. Then 
Vegas is the second wild card right now. They have 68 points in 60 games. They've hot on their ass. Hot on their ass is Dallas, who is one point back but has three games in hand. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Vancouver, Vancouver, they've only played 59 games. And they're 7 2 and 1 in their last 10. And they have 65 points. They're only three points back of Vegas for that second wild card mm-hmm. spot or third in the division. Edmonton yeah. and Vegas are tied. So, and then um, the Ducks have started to fall off a little bit here, too. And yeah. So. Yeah, they've got 64 points in 61 games. They're, they're slipping. Yeah, they've lost three in a row, four or five and one in their last. So, yeah, I think the funniest thing would be Vegas not making the playoffs. Oh, <laughs> it'd be the best. That would be amazing. That would be. Awesome, especially after the Eichel trade, the Stone trade last year. Vegas fans having literally no adversity in their life and being whiny bitches. Uh, it would be, oh, it would be so good. The Sharks play the Panthers on Tuesday. Probably going to be a little bit harder of a game <laughs> than the Kings games, but we'll yes. see. Uh, Joe Thornton's on IR. I don't think he's traveling with the team, so maybe he'll be back. I- unsure. Be kind of cool if he, he showed up anyway. Yeah, um, always good to see Thornton back in the building, especially because if, if he retires, this would be his last chance uh, to be in San Jose in a non one day contract retirement scenario. <laughs> what are you talking about? The Sharks Panthers Cup final? <laughs> 2.4. What do you think? If there's a 2.4% chance of San Jose making the playoffs, what do you think that? mathematical chance of a Sharks Panthers cup final is this year. Like point zero 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 one. Never tell me the odds, Kyle. <laughs> God. If you would like to interact with us and see JD's memes, uh JD, what's that meme called with like the red eyes? That no, you no, did great meme. Yeah. <laughs> JD was a madman last night. Uh on Twitter. You can check out Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Locked on Sharks, all of them. Um yeah, come interact with us. YouTube, Locked on Sharks. Email, Locked on Sharks at gmail.com. We've got a backlog. We'll read them coming up this week. By backlog, I mean there's like three. Uh, <laughs> so many. Amazon, Spotify, Apple, the usual suspects if you want to listen to us. JD's at my fry hole. Kyle is at Kyle Demetrius. Uh, thank you for making us your first listen. Um, we've got, so with the trade deadline um, next week, uh, we will be going live at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific or Eastern time, noon Pacific time on YouTube. Um, so you can watch us and interact with us as we break down what's probably going to be a pretty busy day for the Sharks that day. So well, maybe not, though. Maybe. If Reimer's not going and Hurdle resigns. <laughs> that Cogs Hunter <laughs> trade is going to be <laughs> massive. Cogs, baby. <laughs> yeah, massive shark waves. Uh, and, and Middleton, too. R.I.P. Middleton. But uh, so, yeah, make sure you guys, uh, if you're not subscribed, you should go subscribe to us on YouTube right now. Um, all of our episodes drop on YouTube first. So if you want to uh, listen to us right away, we're there. Um, and then go check out all the other amazing stuff like bet on, or Locked On Bets if you want to win some money, especially with March Madness starting this weekend. And all the other amazing podcasts such as Locked On uh, <laughs> Rangers. <Baseball>. Rangers. <laughs> Texas Rangers. That it's baseball. That's a baseball. Are they still horrendous? I have no idea. I would, I would imagine so. I'm an NL guy anyway. So, Ooh, oh, I can't believe they got rid of the DH. That's so uh, lame. It is. Or they got they added the DH. Pitchers hitting was so sick. Mm-hmm. Pitchers, you're right. Watching Bumgarner just crush it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, Carlos Zambrano hitting dingers in like the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Pitchers hitting is or just Bartolo so Colon hitting the one in what in San Diego. <laughs> he's the like... he's the oldest player to ever hit. He's the he holds the record for oldest first home run ever. Because he was like 44 or whatever the yeah, hell he was. was. And he did it. Oh, my God. The world is a lesser place without Bartolo Colon in the MLB. Crushing it. Bye, friends. Big sexy.